licensed. They're taught to do muscle testing because it helps us to diagnose if there's a neurological problem or not. So if I'm testing someone, they may have neck problems or low back problems, or they might have sciatic or a pain going down. I can isolate which nerve it is by testing specific muscles that go to specific fingers, to specific uh, nerves. So for example, if I test this on someone here like that, that is the T1 nerve root. If I test this muscle, if a person's weak, that's the C8 nerve root. Tricep, C C7. Bicep, C6. Deltoid, C5, right? So it's not, it's not out there to think that muscle testing is a weird science, right? It's every doctor knows how to muscle test. It's just that applied kinesiologists, which what my wife and I are, um, we've learned the technique of applied kinesiology to use muscle testing to get a lot more data from the body. Like, how, what's, what's the body trying to tell us if we touch one of these circuit breakers and the, and the muscle weakens? That tells us something, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really awesome because you're actually getting into uh, the nervous system to communicate and ask questions and see how the body responds to certain things. And um, I was just doing, it's Angela, right? Okay, um, just working with Angela. Angela, could I share what you said just uh, about? Um, so Angela noticed when she gets body work, she gets more sore. Does anybody ever notice when they get body work or massage or, or treatment, they get more sore? Sometimes. 
sometimes you get a little flare up. Usually that means that there may be an inflammatory loop going on somewhere. And there's lots of different causes for inflammation. Tonight we're gonna to talk about some of the uh, toxic exposures that we're all living in. Does anybody have a, a concept that the world is getting more and more toxic as time goes on? Yes. One stat we found on the internet today was um, since 1970s, the US government has legalized the use of over 87,000 chemicals are let loose in our environment, in the products that we use, in the air, in the water, in the food. And we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on that today. So using kinesiology is incredible. And without going into a lot of story, I'm gonna pass these around. Don't, uh, don't let the North Pole and the South Pole get together, because they'll, but if you push the two South Poles, there's an S, or the two North Poles, you'll feel what magnetic fields feel like. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And it's one of those things that I like because it's kind of like they say, you, like the wind, you can see the effect of the wind, but you can't see the wind. Um, yeah, love, you can feel love. Um, and energy, energy, you can, yeah, that's, that's magnetic energy. And you know when they talk about grounding? Have people heard about grounding? Think about if you take your shoes off, there's a current in the earth, right? In fact, the current is so strong that it pulls the entire ocean all the way out at low tide and brings it all the way in in high tide. Pretty strong magnet that we're standing on, right? So it's good to have time when you're not um, using an insulation of rubber soles or something like that. If you wear your um, wear moccasins or or socks or things like that, I'll take them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get them stuck on anything on the way. So, um, because we have a number of things we're going to go through, and I'm not going to keep you here um, for a long time at all, but I do want to make sure that I cover the main topics that each one of you have come for tonight. And Angela, what would you say your number one is? Inflammation. I don't know if it's inflammation, but it's like spinal instability. Yeah, yeah, good. And I, I, I may demonstrate with you because I did get the, the pill I wanted to test you on. So spinal instability, and um, is there an extra uh, little clipboard with a yeah. piece of paper and a pen? Is there one handy? Thank you. So inflammation and kind of like spinal instability, kind of, kind of like a chronic tightness, yeah. something like that. And would you just introduce yourself to the group? Which um, my name is Dan. You? I'm Hi, Dan. And who just? Hi, I'm Mari, and I seem to always have TMJ issues. <coughs> okay. Itchy skin. Itchy skin. And who are you? I don't know. Patricia. Patricia. Itchy skin is definitely an inflammatory feeling. Hello, I'm Robin, and I told you earlier today the puffiness around the eyes. Yeah. That just happened in the last 18 months. And sometimes it gets so bad I, I had vertigo and nausea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Puffiness around the eyes. Looks like better. Okay. Inflammation, I think, that I'll let you tell me. Um, swelling in the ankles, and it's not hard. The doctor checked it out, but I, it's just pain. Okay. 
pain in the ankles too? No. 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 <laughs> that needs to go. Can I have another pen? Um, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Look at that. We're just you guys are taking care of me here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like her puffiness. All right, and does everybody know Mary? Oh, I'm Mary. Sorry. Hi, Mary. Mary. Right. Mary. 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 Yes. Oh, I'm Mary. Yes. I'm Priscilla, and I'm, I'm not, I think my concerns are um, insomnia and migraines. And just general achiness, body aching. Okay. I'm Emily, and I would say my concern at this moment is uh, blood pressure. Linda, and actually, I like inflammatory inflammation. <clears throat> what? Anti inflammation. And where, um, how do you notice or perceive inflammation to be important to you? Well, one, I'm puffy. No, I'm kidding. Uh, my joints. Joints. Yeah. And puffy, you know, it's weird. I feel inflamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if I go on just a green drink juice diet, I the inflammation goes way down. Yeah. down. Yeah. When I just start eating again. Yeah. So I'm sure it's diet and other things. And uh, Angela, how do you notice inflammation? I feel in my body, just my muscles are tight. Hands or sore. Just like I just body overall. Yeah. Oh, can I circle back to me because I I didn't understand the question. <laughs> so you were asking us how we are aware of inflammation. Well, if you mentioned inflammation, oh. I was you know thinking if you had um, a way of sensing or being aware of it. Oh yeah, I think like a lot of people said, I feel like puffy or sometimes digestion isn't good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just the overall feeling of not not great. <laughs> okay. And in the back row. So, um, yeah, I'm aware of inflammation. Oh, I have to say, Diana. Hi, Diana. And um, so I'm very aware because I've had chronic fatigue for so many years, 12 years. So I've been on a special diet. I know when I cheat, my body will tell me when I have enough, stop cheating or else. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I think my biggest issue right now is my digestion. And, uh, you know, I just feel that my whole intestine, my stomach is just out of whack. You know, I have, I have so many symptoms of things, you know, like no acid in my stomach, mm. not digesting fats at all, just a whole bunch of things. And I get a Chinese chart on my tongue and it says that I have malabsorption okay. problems. So very, I think that says common. it all right there. You know what the term mal you know what malabsorption is called, you know, more commonly? No. A leaky gut. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh. Leaky gut. Yeah. Thank you all for being willing to share that. And I, I want to make sure that I touch on, on these things tonight. Okay, so all of us want to feel our best and have the energy to do what we love. Oftentimes pain, fatigue, headaches, weight loss, resistance, digestive issues, and the like keep us from enjoying what we love and achieving our potential. My wife is feeling a little bit under the weather. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she was fighting off a bug last week and then we had a real busy weekend and then she worked real hard on patients the last two days and she said, you know what, I'm really tired. And these bugs that are going around right now, they can really mutate and then come back around if you push yourself too much, even though you're feeling great. Yeah. So um, she just said, I'm just gonna rest and take a bath with uh, hydrogen peroxide. If you're ever feeling like you're getting sick, a bath with three quarts of hydrogen peroxide. Three quarts? Yeah, three quarts of hydrogen peroxide works really well. The kind you buy at the drugstore? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like a dollar, dollar fifty a bottle or something. You just tell them you soak? About a half an hour. And um, yeah. Uh huh. So, just what, soak my feet? I wouldn't drink the three quarts. <laughs> <laughs> is it beneficial to soak feet? Because it would come up. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you could probably you probably do it in a, in a foot soak. Okay. Yeah. Something's better than nothing. Yeah. 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 I believe that. Just do whatever you can the best yeah. you can. Lots. Can you combine it with Epsom salt or separate? You could combine it with Epsom salt. Epsom salt is great because it pulls a lot of uh, acids out of your system. We tell people if you've got sore areas of the body, we take an athletic sock and then put two to three pounds of, uh, of Epsom salt into the sock fold the top over, put a rubber band around it, and that becomes your Epsom salt soak. Put it wherever you're sorest and soak for half an hour. So most people comment is um, low back pain, neck pain. So I just put one right across the low back and one right across the neck is and soak dry? for half an hour. And, no, wet. and uh, wet, dry? Wet. Said that wet. would be wet. Wet. Yeah, okay. we're talking, still talking about the back. Okay. But, um, but anyhow, that's why my wife isn't making it tonight. Um, and then, uh, yeah, some tools tonight to detoxify the body and diminish inflammation to heal from these chronic symptoms so that you can thrive. Congratulations on taking the first step towards feeling amazing and tackling every new day like a champion. You are here because you won't let another year go by without overcoming these symptoms that are keeping you down. All right? All right, so. So let's see here. Wow. Uh, women expose themselves to 168 chemicals every day. I was just telling um, Angela that we updated our slides from our detox um, in the past. And I just wanted to get all the latest and greatest off the internet. What are the new numbers that are out? And uh, so um, this is my first time actually seeing some of the things that we, we got. Cassie back here really did a great job on, on this. Cassie, Thank you. great job, great job. Because of you. 168 chemicals every day, about twice as many as men. The average man surveyed said he used five to seven personal care products a day. This can include things like yogurt, toothpaste, shampoo, hair gel, all that. Average woman uses nine to 12 products. Teenage girls use 17. A class of these environmental toxins known as endocrine disrupting chemicals can be found in food, environment, and products we put on our bodies. So this was a part since the 70s, more than 87,000 chemicals have been approved for commercial use. Yet those uh, thousands of chemicals, only just over 1,000 have been formally examined and graded for their carcinogenic potential. 86,000 86, have not been viewed as safe, but they're allowed. I just read an article that says that um, now more than ever in doctors are even stymied that uh, U.S. youth are having higher rates of cancer than ever. Oh, absolutely. And, and I, we're going to get to that, that too because, oh. I mean, how many people know that increased toxicity leads to increased risk of cancer? Yep. Right? Yeah, well known. Back. 10 chemicals of public concern, air pollution, arsenic, asbestos, benzene, cadmium, dioxins, inadequate or excess fluoride, lead, mercury, highly hazardous pesticides. How many people in the room actually had mercury amalgam fillings in their life? Uh, yeah, in the life. Yeah. This is what actually got me to become a doctor I was interested in health because my dad died at 39, and I knew I didn't want to die at 39. I was a little angry at God for a long time, but um, it did make me aware that health is not a foregone conclusion. And um, I read my first health book as a senior in high school. His name was Paul Bragg. He was the, yeah, you know, Paul Bragg. Well, you Bragg's Liquid Aminos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. and His yeah. book was called um, The Miracle of Fasting. And and it just turned my life around. And I went on water fasts and, and did all kinds of detox and things. And then when I was 21, I got mercury poisoning. I think I had about 16 different mercury amalgam fillings in my mouth. And then I had a bad... Uh, 
bad headache and I was on the insurance plan at my college and the dentist said, you need a root canal. I said, okay, well, how much is that gonna cost? Nothing, I go, okay, I'm a pre-med student, vegetarian and um, going to school to become a doctor. And, and so then she came in and she goes, you know, your whole mouth needs to be redone because I said, why? And they said, well, those, those fillings have been in there a long time and they all need to be redone. I said, how much is that gonna cost? She goes, nothing. I said, okay, yeah. all right, so sign me up. Well, they drilled out all my mercury amalgam fillings without dams, breathing it all in, and then they filled me fresh full of new mercury amalgam. Oh, no. At 21. At 21. Wow. So within um, about four weeks, I was starting to see all these hairs in the shower. Like, what is going on? Every time I take a shower, it's like, there's 100, 200 hairs down here. And then I got big bags underneath my eyes. So my skin started turning gray. Oh. My friends are going, uh, dude, what is going on with you? I go, uh, what do you mean? And you look really bad. And so I went to the clinic. I was feeling lousy, and the clinic had no idea, uh, the, just the medical clinic. And then he's asking me questions, and, okay, so let me get this straight. Your dad died at 39, you're a vegetarian, you're a pre-med student, you're under a lot of stress, you're partying with your friends, yeah, I was partying with my friends uh, on the weekends and sometimes during the week, and, and uh, this college days. And so, well, this is your plight. This is kind of... This is what you were given. And all the time, there's mercury poisoning. Uh -huh. And nickel, mercury and nickel poisoning. Uh, I don't, don't have lead. But anyhow, these all throw off our hormones. Um, they cause us to have cancer. I mean, this is just the reality. We're, we're all swimming in a very toxic soup. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Well, our liver kidneys, lymphatic system play a major role in removing biological harmful compounds. Our bodies have not evolved to deal with the growing number of toxins we unknowingly interact with every day. So detoxification systems can be easily become overwhelmed, causing toxic overload. Now, the World Health Association, which I don't really um, re respect that much, uh, but food and water supply for toxins has found a large percentage of food consumed is deemed unsafe. Highest concentration of toxins are derived from glyphosate, oh, yeah. Roundup. Yeah. Yeah. On our car, we have a, uh, a sticker on the window that says Roundup Monsanto. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, President Obama signed a thing that they could never be found guilty or liable for any harm what? that they would have ever caused. What? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And same thing with the vaccinations that Reagan signed, mm -hmm. that no vaccination, no, no pharmaceutical company could ever be found liable for the cause that would be caused from vaccinations and, and the adjuvants. And Clinton signed a bill that no one could ever... Um, like technology couldn't be held back from advancing due to health concerns, like mm. cell towers and mm. 5G, stuff like that. Oh my God, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. yeah. And you remember what Eisenhower's famous um, saying was when he left office in his um, goodbye speech? Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember the key phrase he used? Do you remember, Patricia? Well, it's more about what to the military. Yes, he yeah. said the military industrial complex. But, Oh, yeah, yeah. Industrial complex is big business. Okay. The biggest business is pharmaceuticals. Probably second is oil. You know, so they're all kind of in this whole thing together. Yeah, so anyhow, we got Roundup going all over the place. And, you know, finally, um, I think Laguna Beach just voted two weeks ago yep. that there's certain areas that they're willing to not spray. And I think they're trying to catch up with some really progressive cities, you know, when you think of a really progressive city like like Irvine. There you go, Irvine. Maybe we should do it too, Irvine's doing it. So, anyhow, toxins. 
So let's see, what do we got here? Diarrhea, sneezing, coughing, excessive urination, sore throat, heartburn, nasal congestion, vomiting, excessively, uh, excessive body odors, excessive oily skin, toxins gradually accumulate, fatigue, muscle aches, memory difficulty, sleep impairment, eczema, itchy skin, depression, or brain fog. Mm -hmm. so let me take a look at that list again. Mm. Quite a few things on there. So the organs of elimination. Um, liver. Over 650 isolated functions of the liver. All going on. 650 functions is isolated. A little over that. And the, the innate intelligence of our body is making the liver do these things all the time. It's pretty incredible if you think about it. The kidneys, the lungs, the intestines, and the skin. Those are the five eliminating organs. So there's many things that can be done to help our bodies along. Uh, dry brushing the skin, for one thing. Intestines, there's ways to clean out the intestines. We use fiber, we use charcoal products, things like that. The lungs, we do deep breathing exercises. Uh, the kidneys, drinking water, making sure that with your water intake, they, I read one study that said the average adult kidney can process four ounces of water every 20 minutes. So let's just say you sit down and you drink a 12 ounce glass because you're thirsty. How much are you going to pee out? At least eight. At least eight ounces if you drink a 12 ounce. I think that's a 12 ounce cup right there. Right? So it's much better for us to have four to six ounces every half hour throughout the day so we're not just peeing it all out. Okay? And Cassie put a reminder on my phone every half an hour. He says, drink your water, and then I try to find where my water jug is and have a big gulp. So it's better, okay, I'm, I'm bad at math. So just have a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Throughout Rather more, more yes, more frequently. Okay. And then the Otherwise, water you're just going to pee it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, plastics, plastic bottles, microplastics. Um, if you can use glass, my wife won't use Tupperware anymore. When we're, so she only uses the, like the Pyrex or what's that? What Pyrex. Was, yeah, the glass. Pyrex, yeah, but there's another um, one that she uses. But anyhow, it has a plastic lid on it, but at least it's not, the food isn't sitting on the plastic. Especially if it's hot when you put it in. The boss has, you know, their water that's in... Um, glass. glass instead, but this uh, this whole thing of microplastics. I mean, even micro particulate they talk about in sunscreen. The the micro particles can get right in between the cell walls and get in. Yeah, it's it's just you know I think that what it's coming down to the more I talk about this and think about it is we just got to. Kind of return to as pure of substances as we can, mm -hmm. you know. Like even with our massage, we're changing our massage oils. Even though we've had an organic one, I'm trying to get one that's even pure and just use like almond oil or you know cannabis oil and things mm -hmm. like that that you can do just instead of all these chemicals. I mean, you look at it and well, <laughs> can I paint a, a a picture really quick of of the profit that I think Eisenhower was talking about. Like, if DuPont and these big companies that create all these chemicals and create all these products, if they put all these chemicals in things that everybody's gonna be using all the time, people are gonna get sicker, right? They're gonna be more inflamed, right? Then what are they gonna need? Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. And then the more pharmaceuticals that they're gonna, they're gonna get, and the more chemicals, they're going to most likely get cancer. And then they're gonna need 
But there was actually one, what was it? We were watching the other, um, Mo, were you at that uh, Common Ground? Did anybody see the movie Common Ground? Is that with Julia Roberts? No, no it, it was with Jason Momoa and some other people. Oh, um, Laura Dern, Laura Dern, Jason Momoa. Common Ground, take a look at that. Um, look it up, Common Ground, it's amazing. It tells the story of farming and how um, this whole thing they talked about, I think it was Pfizer. Pfizer owns the chemical. The chemical that they use gives cancer and then the cancer treatment is made by Pfizer. So it's just this cycle that just keeps on perpetuating more and more and more profit for these big companies. So was there something you were asking me you had your hand up? When you were talking about the oils that you think they're healthy, but they're not, is avocado oil yeah. safe? Yeah, and I've got a slide on, on, on the oils. Sure, sure. Coconut oil. Coconut oil, yeah, let me see if that's, here we are. Oh, perfect, perfect, all right. So, canola oil. You know the Heart Association actually says that canola oil is better for you than butter. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. You oh, my see? God. It's prevalent, it's just in, it's in the society. It's all a profit-making machine that is trying to get people sick and trying to get them on drugs and then trying to get them to have cancer. I, it's ridiculous to even think that people would logically think through that, but they're logically thinking through that Yeah. Exactly. for their own gain. Sacklers. Yeah. So canola oil is horrible. Um, and oh, every French fry now basically is made in canola oil. I talked to some restaurateurs and they yeah. said, yeah, it's the, it's the oil that lasts the longest. And you just hate to think that your French fries are canola oil, but they are. And they gunk up the cell membrane. I'll talk to you more about the cell membrane, but um, first, the oil must be extracted from the seed. This can be accompanied through, through physical pressing of the seed, although this isn't very efficient. Usually a chemical process involving hexane is used to help extract the oil. However, the resulting crude oil is cloudy, dark, and strong smelling. There are still many more steps to make it ready to be bottled and sold. They're gonna degum it, that removes the phospholipids and gums. Neutralize it, removes other compounds such as chlorophyll, metals, and free fatty acids. Washing and drying removes soaps and waters. Bleaching it removes Ugh. pigment containing compounds to get a uniform color. Dewaxing it removes waxes, allowing the oil to remain fluid in cold temperatures. Deodorizing it eliminates odor. Use good fats instead olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, grass fed butter, or ghee. That's what we should be cooking with. And just when you see how many products like canola oil is, yeah. like the first ingredient, it's horrible. Okay. Is it true that um, canola oil also affects our um, the neural pathways or something to that? Effect? It's it's a neurotoxin. A neurotoxin. Yeah. Okay. So not all detoxes are created equal. Sometimes certain detox protocols allow your body to release the toxins and chemicals, but they do not include a binding agent that binds to the toxins okay. to carry them out through the eliminated organs. So in general. Um, I wanted to try to simplify this. The liver goes through phase one and phase two detoxification pathways. Myself together there, but um, um, that's why we designed this one. So the, the fiber is part of what um, helps to clean out the intestine. The daily cleanse, um, we use something called Detox to Flourish. Um, we got it from a company called Zymogen and um, its original name is OptiCleanse, but they changed their packaging and they put it in little packages and raised the price significantly. And I, so I said to them, I go, look, I've been buying a lot of this stuff. My patients are doing well on it. I want to go back to the big tub yeah. and for a better price. They said, okay, if you do that, you got to private label it and you got, you got to buy two dozen at a time. I said, okay, fine. So now we call their product Detox to Flourish which we have, and that's what that is. GI Resolve is really good for leaky gut. 
um, to help decrease the inflammation in the di digestive tract, and that's really helpful. Uh, plant source minerals we use, um, they're really the full spectrum of minerals, um, and we utilize that. We use liver X. Hey, which, shout out to Linda. Well, you know, I was going to say, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to promote her, uh, and, you know, she is kind of famous worldwide. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we use her her uh, her plant source minerals, Ooh, and then Liver X basically has just about everything in it that would help your liver to detoxify. And then we use Bind, which is uh, four different sizes of charcoal mm -hmm. that uh, help to be that catcher's mitt to catch that stuff and then carry out of your body. Okay. And so we do a um, a two week and a four week. And we use a couple other things on the four week to help things move out a little bit faster. And um, those are options for you if you're considering um, decreasing your inflammation in your body and you know a lot of these symptoms, a lot of these symptoms I think that we talked about here um, could go away. I wanted to do a couple, a couple uh, tests for you just to show you some things. And then I guess Maria, you've got yeah, I, we're trying to make this thing reasonable as much as we can. So it ends up, what, is that a little, you know? Oh, sorry, it is 10%, 10% off. 10% off, yeah. yeah. So instead of 310, it's 279, so. But that's all your products, and then if you, if you would like to actually have it um, customized a little bit, what I do is, I'll go through all your body reflex points and determine what systems are in need the most or where, you know, like if your job was to be a, um, a nurse that goes into the, um, the room where all the babies are, what, which baby are you gonna go to first? The one who's crying the loudest, right? And that's what the, our system of determining helps us to figure out what system needs the most help. Is it the liver, is it the intestine, is it the kidneys, do you have a food allergy? The other thing along with this program, we do suggest not having any, um, any grains during that time. Um, and you know, some people can use raw organic dairy, but if you ever notice that you feel worse on dairy, but we just kind of give all of the rest of it a, a break. Just take a little vacation from doing all the things you normally do and just eat good, pure, healthy food, you know, to the best of your ability. You don't have to be like so aggro, you know, about it. The closer you get to that parameter, the better results you get. So that's a start, it's a starting point. I think that's the last slide, but um, how about if I, um, there was one more, Dr. G, I think, about see seeing you, or is it, or is it not? I think it was on the back of that. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're doing So, yeah, it. normally we do a biochem visit with uh, people 187, but if, if you want to do that, we're trying to give everybody a deal. It's 127. And you can also bring in your any blood work that you have. If you have blood work, let me take a look at it. I'll walk through that and then I'll go through and, and start checking all these systems and see what's going on. Um, question about the uh, no caffeinated tea. I know I did um, I did a cleanse, uh, I did like a seven or 10 day juice cleanse, uh -huh. juice fast, and um, I didn't I didn't drink tea the first day. Yeah. And um, I got like a vicious headache. Headache, yeah. And then, well the thing was when I talked to the person who made the um, cleanse, he said actually you can drink uh, a little tea, like green tea, yeah. and I did. I did it more sparingly, but yeah. I. My concern is that because the I, caffeine I, withdrawal is, is very real for some yeah. people. So I suggest you would taper and not just go cold turkey. I would say if you usually have two cups of coffee, maybe have you know one cup of coffee and then a half a cup and titrate yourself down. Before you start, or even while you're doing it, or is as it, you wish. Okay. Yeah, it's. I mean, because I'm consciously cutting it back. Good. It'd make it easier to detox, you know, but has anybody else ever experienced a caffeine withdrawal? Yeah. I did when I stopped drinking coffee. It was, my muscles hurt. It was yeah. Um, Rouse has an organic decaf coffee. Oh. 
Because it's ground, you can't try and but yeah, right. that saved me when Lisa said right. you have to go off. Yeah, you know, it does probably not help for a detox, right? I mean, it, it helped me get to where Yeah, because there's want. still a little bit of caffeine. So yeah. I guess it's for those people that might have a withdrawal, you know. Like I said, it's not super, you don't have to like be like absolutely perfect and get stressed out about it. But the closer you stay within the guidelines, the, the better results you're going to get. I um, noticed for me, it's so cool to see the first few days I'm like super tired, but then like my natural energy comes in and I'm just like super energized, like way more than I would be when I'm drinking oh, caffeine. Sorry. Yeah, It's really cool. Um, and also maca chocolate tea is a really yummy like thing that you can do instead. Kind of has a little coffee. Yes. Maca chocolate tea, you can give it a little good. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. So I've done a yeah. detox before where I had to get off the coffee and I was at a place, Optimal Health, and so we all like snuck a couple ounces of coffee the next day, <laughs> just two ounces strong, and the next day one ounce, and then we were good and no headaches. And then our friend didn't want to do that. She had a migraine for three days. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, I traumatize our body like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to keep you here too long, but if anybody wants, are you ready to get going? Yeah, I have a pup that just had surgery, oh, okay. so Got it. just oh. had yeah Did his second knee replacement in eight months. Oh no! Oh. So, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, big boy. Did I was I able to answer the questions? Yeah, I, you were? yeah, I have. Yeah, I'm gonna look in. I I think it might be good. I don't know. I've never gone that long without. And then just remember, I mean, anything that you do along these lines um, is going to be good for you. Yeah. And, and even if it's if it seems overwhelming, don't make it overwhelming. Yeah, no, make it Would yeah. you recommend for like someone like her um, to maybe break it in half? Like if they got for two weeks, do one week and then... Yeah, you could. I think it's just better to let, let yourself um, do the process because you're going to gain momentum. But if you if you feel like you you know you need some grains or you you need um, like almond tortillas or or gluten free something you know I mean don't don't stress too much about it. There's there's labs where I did I found that I had autoimmunity um, from the metals because metals usually lead to autoimmunity. And then I did um, Cyrex Labs it's called, and I found. Um, that I had three different tissues under attack. My body was already attacking my own cartilage mm -hmm. and my myelin sheath, which could lead to ALS or MS. Yeah. Um, and um, and then I did the test to find out what foods were making it worse. And gluten, by far, is if you if you have autoimmunity, you cannot touch gluten. Yeah, I think that's going to be yeah. a problem for me. Yeah. I've got to get all of the, the other stuff. Yeah, you just get on. get rid of anything with gluten in your house and, and get the gluten free pasta, yeah. gluten free tortillas. They have gluten -free. so much gluten free food now. Absolutely, it's, it's great. Just, it's it's good. good. Yeah, and but on that blood test, I also found corn was on mine, and so was eggs. So it's like it's been twelve years since I've had oh. meat and, uh, and and corn. What kind of blood test shows it's that? Cyrex. C Y R E X, and it's uh, array number five. Array is the test, but array five shows if you have autoimmunity. I can usually doing my reflex testing. I can usually find if a person has autoimmunity, and then I order the blood test, and there it is. So what were you gonna say? Thanks, Angela. I know you gotta go. Question. I'm going in for blood work yeah. Tuesday. Can you piggyback on my GP's blood work request? Yes. What I would do, Mary, is um, ask the 
ask the downstairs, we, we get like a $1,600 lab for $270. Okay. Um, and it has all the inflammatory markers like homocysteine, mm -hmm. C-reactive protein, ferritin. You, you need to make sure that those are on that. And then once you do it, the way you get your MD to do it, yeah. say, hey, um, I saw, thank you for getting the blood test. I, I appreciate you being thorough and you know, I actually, it inspired me to want to be even more thorough and I got on the internet. I started looking up all these different tests that could show if I have more inflammation. Yeah. And uh, I just wondered, would you be, it said there that I should get this one and this one. Would you be okay with adding that onto my thing? Then they always do because oh, they, they don't do? want to, they always do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, at I'm least I won't at, say always. There might I'm be some. I was looking at what they were requesting. Like that's nothing. But if you know, if you tell them that your chiropractor or your naturopath did it, then no, they're not going to do it. But the internet. Oh, you found something on the internet. <laughs> oh, oh, is oh. It something uh, sure, yeah. The internet said that. Oh, is geez, it I, the, I forgot. I didn't, okay, I didn't, I'll go talk to Kathy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there something that? Uh, I mean, is it something that insurance will pay for? Yeah, yeah. if your medical doctor um, oh, orders okay. it. Yeah, it's just more of a comprehensive blood panel, and a lot of times the insurance companies don't want to do it. Okay. So, yeah, well, yeah, they don't want you to find out. They just want you to take the drugs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let me, Dan, let me show you this one thing because a lot of times I found out about. Come up here for a second. I found out about um, this in 1988. I was telling Dan, he was telling me that. He had a symptom whereby his body just doesn't feel stable and he doesn't feel like he holds his adjustments and treatments. And uh, he said, that sounds like something that I found for myself. So what I'm going to do is basically is um, check in with his nervous system. Push here. Good. He's strong as a rock. Push. Good. I'm just going to go to, there's a, an on-off switch to his computer. I'm just going to check and see if his bio computer is on. Now that weakens him, the back of my finger. Just like the magnet did when they repel each other, one side of my finger has a positive charge, or south pole, north pole, and it should actually weaken him. Now his computer's on. I can, I can get in and start checking all kinds of stuff on him. <laughs> So, but the one thing that I did for him is I took this course called Allergies and the Spine, and these two researchers found that when people had high levels of histamine, it twisted and torqued their spine like you're wringing out a washcloth. And so the adjustments and massages that you might have gotten have a tendency to not feel like they're holding. And now, with those blocks in there, he's completely weakening. Both, and he's a strong guy. He's got no strength. I can take him just with my little finger. So are you showing how destabilizing the spine? It makes it- I'm pushing easier. and torquing him. Yeah. And then this is what they found. People with higher levels of histamine were showing this torque pattern to their spine, making it so that they don't hold their treatments very long. And let's just see if it's related. Taste this nasty pill. <laughs> Wait, can you show one, one more time what you're doing? That's okay. Just hold it on my tongue. Yeah, just taste it. Give it on the top of your tongue. Good. Now let's go back here and hold. And he is strong as a rock with that antihistamine on his tongue. Now, if we take that nasty pill out, Good, stick out your tongue, Dan. <laughs> Can't swallow. Good. And let's just retest him. And hold. Nobody home. Wow. Completely short circuits again. Wow. Yeah. I'm confused about it strengthened him, but you're saying it weakens your body. This histamine itself weakens your body and twists and torques you. It's an inflammatory oh, chemical. Like it, that's an antihistamine. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I get the yeah. distinction. Kind of like you, you would take a Sudafed or something like that, right. but you get tired from it. Right. So, I mean, if he lived on anti-inflammatories, he'd feel better and he'd hold his treatments 
longer. But it's not necessarily the answer. Because it's, there's all byproducts of the anti-inflammatories. Right? Yeah, so so he you know he he'd feel better because the histamines weren't causing so much inflammation. But I'd rather find out why does he have the histamines. And you know what I'd like to do for you? Um, I'd like to just do a little complimentary um, workup with you uh, at the office because I know you did get a lot of care mm -hmm. with us. And I'd like to just see if I could dig deeper and maybe find something for you that might help you. Okay. Okay? Sounds good. All right. <laughs> so, Cassie, you'll remember when Dan calls. I'll put an alert. Yeah. Okay. So, any other questions or are we good for tonight? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, just a quick question, uh, because I had my bloods done, funny enough, just this past week, and before I even knew this was happening, um, and uh, I found a few high markers that I was very surprised about being vegan and super careful, like even about like all the toxins, like I'm super clean about what I put on my body, and yeah. Anyway, I know there are many factors, but um, my uh, blood pressure uh, was surprisingly high, um, and then cholesterol also. Um, so I'm already tweaking my diet and seeing some things that might be contributing to the cholesterol. But my question is, um, does the um, does uh, inflammation contribute to high, to blood pressure? Does it affect us? One hundred percent. Okay. It's one of the things that makes us retain fluid. And and you just think about what what's the first thing that we do in in chemistry class, what do they teach us? How many took chemistry class? Salt and water in your hand. Well, if you, if you spill the acid on your hand, what do you do? Well, you run over to that big thing and pull, pull it down and water goes on you because your body's gonna need that water to, to decrease the, um, the concentration, mm -hmm. right? So your body will hold on to a lot of extra fluid and that extra fluid is like uh, a water balloon that's mm -hmm. filled up a lot more mm -hmm. and that's gonna, also increase your blood pressure. Mm. Yeah. So. I'm not here by yeah. happenstance. Yeah. <coughs> Bless you. What else? Is there anything else? Or are we good? Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned amaranth. A. It's a long word. Amarantha. Amaranth or. Amaranth. Oh, amaranth. Yeah, it's another grain. Yeah. Yeah. Is, well, tell me about that. Is it gluten free? It's a, is it yeah, it's gluten free. It's oh, an it old is. Egyptian. Um, herb or okay. an old Egyptian grain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quinoa. Um, Very big in Africa. Millet, so, millet, amaranth. Yeah. And so is it walk? Yeah. 20, 30, 50 miles. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is it acceptable for autoimmune conditions? Well, interesting you ask that because the, um, the, Test number four, array number four by Cyrex Labs, actually tests you for foods that are similar shaped enough to gluten that, uh, and amaranth is on there, tapioca is on there, okay. um, a lot of other grains that you wouldn't think, you might think, I am gluten free, I'm okay. Uh -huh. But you might have one of these other ones that have a marker, that's what I found out with corn. Gosh darn it, because I love my corn tortillas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but. Um, so a lentil is a bean. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But beans are good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Some Dr. Gundry has got this whole thing now. He thinks that certain, you know, beans and lectins and stuff like that. So there's a whole nother, whole nother topic. But. Yeah, but he just found out something new. <laughs> yeah. I, something yeah. he was wrong about. Did he, did he just, admit it? On YouTube. I didn't even listen. I'm sorry. He admitted something? Well, he just said, he thought he found out something new. He, he's wrong about something, and, and so that was the thing. The teaser YouTube video, oh. but I just didn't go there. I was just like, yeah. I, I thought it was a little too. I mean, looking at that, it's like, oh, what do you have left to eat? Yeah, you know. Um, did you say there was something else? There was one thing I thought would be good to touch on was just like the connection of um, weight loss resistance with toxins. Yeah. Why that is? Well, it's because. If you're already too toxic, how smart is it going to be for your innate intelligence to dump more toxins in by burning fat cells? 
Wow. Not going to do it. Because toxins are... Toxins are in the fat. Are are in the fat. So yeah, so your fat. little fat cells are protecting you. They are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And they're sitting there waiting to be used because I want to give you energy, but you just have to be able to handle... I'll, I'll let you break down these fat cells if you can handle the toxins that are in the fat and you have just your fat waste working. So, anything else? Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I want to do the raffle. Did anybody else do something to join?